we're really getting into Koei's experimental phase here. After their trilogy of grand strategy titles became smash hit successes, Koei started getting a bit weird with things. And I actually love this stuff. With Ishin no Arashi, I went in expecting another standard grand strategy game from Koei, which is why I hadn't bothered playing it until I got around to this recording. And instead I got something very different. The setting for this one is the Meiji Restoration. The period around the 1860s in Japan, when the sudden realization that they were still living in the 15th century while everybody else was in the 19th, threw the entire country into chaos. The country broke into basically three factions. Those that said, this is all the shogun's fault, if the emperor was in charge none of this would have happened. Those that said, hey, the shogun's done pretty well for the past 350 years, why change horses midstream? And those that said, what if everybody worked together to resolve this? And Ichi no Arashi plays out that political conflict. There is violence that occurs in the game, some clashes of forces, but this is a game that's all about ideology. Your goal is to persuade the people of Japan to be on your side. The way that the game works is that there's two scenarios with different starting dates. Which scenario you choose changes the political balance of Japan. Then you have to choose which of the three political ideologies you follow. And finally you have your choice of what historical figure you'll play as. Then you're dropped down in a random city in Japan. This is actually a little bit annoying, since in my test play I started out in Edo with the character I chose, and then I chose that same character again and started on Kyushu. Your location matters a lot, because what you're going to be doing throughout most of the game is wandering Japan, encountering people on your travels, and going, debate me, coward! Game time progresses day by day, and every turn is one quarter of a day. You've got a morning, noon, afternoon, and evening turn. You have a certain amount of endurance that limits how much you can do each day, and some of that comes back with a new day. The interface at the bottom of the screen determines what you do. The options at the bottom of the screen from left to right are move, comrades, debate, information, and if you're on certain hexes, enter. There's a lot of places around Japan that you can visit, things like schools where you can improve your debating skills, inns where you can recover to full strength, geisha who help you mentally recover, and castles where you'll encounter feudal lords who are the real group you have to persuade. A lot of those take money, and while you have a small stipend that you get at the start of every month, it's not going to be enough. You could find gold mines where it's possible to get a lot of money, but it requires a fair amount of luck to get it. The best thing you could do for a steady income is buy and sell goods that you transport around Japan. The debate option actually lets you move as well as debate. Wherever you stop, there has to be someone to talk to, though. Entering certain buildings also lets you begin the debate process. First you choose who you want to debate, and if you're of a lower social class than them, they won't even talk to you. Then you have to choose the topic of the debate, and what your attitude is going to be. Basically, if you're going to be open or guarded. Then you start arguing with the person. And there's two kinds of discussions you can get into. Politics and small talk. You always choose if you're going to make your point forcefully or normally. Then there's the topic that you're using. For politics, it's the three factions. And for small talk, it's love, liquor, and money. Finally, you choose your position, for or against. All of this costs you some of your mental energy. You then discuss this with the person, and depending on their own feelings, you might influence them towards your side, or make them more hostile to you. You're blue, they're green, and if the majority of the bar is blue at the end of ten rounds of debate, then you've swayed them a bit. You'll have to debate them multiple times before they'll fully join your side, though. Some of the people you encounter in the world won't want to debate, they'll just want to kill you and in those cases, you'll duel with swords. That's the basics of how you play Ishin no Arashi. The manual didn't have a whole lot more than this either, though the one system I couldn't really interact with in my hour of play was the comrades. If you debate someone as they walk around enough, eventually they like you enough that they'll join you. And that's something that's necessary to help build up your rank and get stronger in debates. Ishin no Arashi is not one of Koei's big hits, but as you might expect, it still has a bit of a following. There were two sequels made, one of which was for the DS. 
As you might expect, this game has a pretty high barrier of entry. You're gonna fail a lot here, and what you're going to wind up doing is playing for an hour or two, discovering where you screwed up, restart, and try again. But that's really what you'd expect from a Koei game. I do like how they translated political debates to RPG combat, and you're going to need to keep notes on who everyone is and what their beliefs are. And those are randomized at the start of every game. I kind of wish that there were more debate topics than there are. Six options just feels a little bit too small. Ishin no Arashi might be the only open-world debate game in existence, and just based on that, it's kind of neat.